the reason I have to pick on women, the, I'm serious, the reason I have to pick on women is because women rule everything. They do. They do. It's all a hoax. Men think they, no, no, they don't. Women rule everything. And the thing what's interesting is this, is that some women haven't figured it out yet. So I'm serious. They haven't figured it out that they rule, they win, they rule everything. There's nothing more powerful than a woman, a feminine woman in her present, like who she is. Solid. Not trying to be somebody else. Not trying to be a man. How many of you guys know women that try to be men? Have you guys ever met them? You know, right? They're trying to compensate. And the reason why that is, you know, and the reason why that is is primarily because of the teaching, you know, when divorce hit our country, you know, all of a sudden, you know, all, all these people were like, don't ever depend, taught their kid, don't ever depend on a man. You know, have all these, you know, these women that are growing up being like, that's right. I don't need you. <laughs> oh, it's hilarious, right? Okay. But the, the reason, <laughs> oh, that's on camera. Don't, don't, you got to take that out of this video. Um, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, but the thing with the relationship is so funny, all right, okay? Um, <laughs> moving on, we got to move on with that subject. Um, so, okay. <laughs> but uh, it, 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 it is what it is. Um, but moving on, picking on women, it's because they rule everything. And when, you know, when they really, because, I mean, Seriously, like if God, like you put a group of guys together and they're watching a football game and they're engaged in what they're doing and it's like, like everything is happening. They're like this. They could have money on the game. You know, like their significance is on the game. Their pride, their ego is on the game. All their focus and attention on is their game. And a feminine woman walks in the room. Where does all the attention go? They don't have to open their mouth. You know, so you guys rule everything. So just be, be gentle with us, um, okay? Just, just saying, okay? Anyway, back to my point. What was I talking about? And so your mom's question, what's really going on? Unconscious competition. What's really going on? Yes. This is what led to this. This is a long, listen, I know sometimes I just, you know, circle. I'll land eventually, I promise, okay, right? So just stay with me, all right? Now, in terms of this, with conscious competence, because you would ask me this question, what's really going on? And at the beginning, I used to get mad. Because how many guys have ever, like, had to, like, my mom would ask me this, because she would always get to the root of the issue, which I didn't want to deal with, because I just wanted to be mad. How many guys ever just wanted to be, like, mad? Like, when you're a kid, when you're, like, mad or something, you're just mad, you know? Like, <laughs> no, I don't want to deal with this, mom. You know, like, leave me alone. I'm just mad. No. And she's like, well, no, what's really going on? You know, and then I would, I would actually have to think about what's really going on. And even though I was mad, I'd go to my room, and I was like, what's, and that question was like, what's really going on? What's really going on is, ugh, you know. And usually all it boiled down to, I was making meaning out of something that didn't matter. It just didn't matter. It really, in the end, didn't matter. So what's really going on? So I used to ask myself these questions. Why is that? Because when you start to understand, what most people think is that emotions happen to them. Like, from outside, like depression just floated through the air and made its way into your body, right? No, we produce all of them. You guys get that, right? Like, any emotion that you create, happiness, sad, joy, anger, hatred, is all something that's produced from in here. You create it. You manifest it. Based on your interpretation of what happens out there, you translate it and then generate it. Everything is generated from within. Depression isn't something that takes you on. You take it on. And it's very simple when most people think about it. Is like, it, look, it, give me like, a, like, let's take a depressed person, okay? All right, so depressed person. Let's just take a look at their physiology for a quick second, right? Is their head, is it up or is it down? Yeah. All right, so are they up or are they down? Yeah. Breathing, is it fast or is it shallow? shallow? They're talking, you know, do they talk fast or do they talk slow? slow? Their tone, is it high or is it low? low? Their shoulders, are they up, you know, posture, or are they down? Yeah. When they move, do they move fast or do they move slow? slow? Right? So the physiology of depression you can get to in a second. Like, if I asked you to get depressed, most of you could get there. <laughs> if you wanted to. The problem is most people make their emotions habits. And then their habits control them. And they don't even understand why they're going there. And then usually what happens is this. They're, they're, they're tired of being depressed, so then they get mad. And then they get mad, and then they're tired of being mad, so they get depressed. And they call that the crazy eight. How many of you guys know people that have ever lived inside that? Okay. Even us at times, right? I've been there. 
The reason why I say that is depression is something. Now, like, when was the last time you saw somebody depressed, like, you know, running? <laughs> Think about it. You know, right? <laughs> High school gym class, yes, yeah, that's probably about it. Good, yeah, good one, right? Or I've never seen a depressed person on a jet ski, you know? <laughs> like, it doesn't, you know, <laughs> right? Because their physiology won't let them. So like if you get into a state where you don't, like if you're in one of those funky states, how many of you guys have been in a funky state before, right? It's one of the things I love about Tony is he doesn't talk about so much the, the, the psychology, but the physiology. Like even people that are great people make crappy decisions when they're in a crappy state, right? So sometimes you just got to break your state. What do you got to do? Run around the block, jump up, boom, you know, like just do something. And I'm telling you, like you know, motion creates emotion. If you want to shift that, all, I'm telling you, you can do that. You just got to get up. And how many of you guys feel better when you do that, right? Okay, so go do some push-ups, get your blood flowing, move your, move your center of gravity, move around a little bit, okay? Some of this stuff helps, and I know it's elementary, but anyway, the reason I'm talking about what you know you don't know, and I'm talking about this, is when it got down to it, well, my mom was always asking me these questions, you know, what's really going on here? Anytime something happens to me, like if an emotion flares up in me, like if I get angry or upset or something, I know, something just happened. I made something mean something that produces emotion. As soon as it hits me, I'm always like, what's going on? <laughs> like... I feel it, like, so, like instantly. And if it's an emotion that I don't experience very often, I'm like, what just happened? And I literally almost have this out-of-body experience now where when an emotion happens to me and it hits me and I'm like, whoa, hold on. Why am I, why, why? What, have, what could have happened for me to take on this emotion? What meaning did I make of something that happened in order for me to react like this? So the next time you have something that pops up, just pause for a quick second. Be like, what's going on? Because in life, I found out the quality of life is the ability to respond instead of react. Most people have reactive behaviors instead of actually responses. How many of you guys have ever been in a communication with yourself or this business or with anybody about anything, and you later look back and you're like, man, I wish I wouldn't have said that. Yeah. That's not really what I meant. What were you doing? You were, re you were reacting instead of responding. Okay? Responsibility, being responsible, okay, is the ability to respond. Most people hide from it. Why? Because responsibility is scary. I know. Okay? Bam. Unconscious competence. Okay? So, unconscious competence. So, these are things you don't even know you don't even know. And then all of a sudden you know them. Now, knowing is half the battle. Yes? Because when you know you don't know something, you now know it so you can learn it. So, all you got to do is find people who've done this who have learned this, master it, and then practice, 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 and then you move to unconscious competence. That's how it works. That's how it works. Everything, okay? Like driving a car. Anyone learn how to drive on a stick shift? Yeah. Okay, all right, so because I, I learned how to drive on a stick, and you know, like when you first learn how to drive on a stick, is it, like, is it challenging? Yes. Yeah, usually, it depends on the stick, you know, some of them are easier than others, but usually it's challenging, you're trying to figure it out, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, you're learning, you're learning, you're learning. Now, how did you learn how to drive on a stick? What happened was this, you didn't know how to drive a stick. Now, before, when you were a kid, you were unconsciously incompetent. You got in a car and you went somewhere and you don't even know how it worked. You're like, hey, we're here, okay? <laughs> When you became consciously incompetent, when you realize, hey, we're going in a car. Got it. You're watching mom and dad. You're watching the shifter. You're like, oh, okay, that's, that's how it does. But you don't know how to do it. So you got to find somebody that knows how to drive a stick. Yes? You don't have to find somebody who knows how to make money. you got to find somebody that knows how to build a business that can teach you how to do what they did. Someone that hasn't drove a stick can't teach you how to drive a stick. I can't teach you Chinese. I don't know it. Stop asking people to give you advice on stuff they don't know. I do not take, like, oh, man, there's this guy from Edward Jones that came over the other day, and it was really bad for him. Um, <laughs> it, was really, it was really bad. So this financial planner came over, and I just, like, I feel horrible. I was trying to be so nice. I really was. Because I was trying to explain to them that, you know, the, the philosophies that your company believes in, I, I don't believe in. But I didn't know how to tell him that without crushing his whole world, Okay. And the thing that I didn't want to tell him is this, is I will never give my money to somebody that doesn't make more money than me. That doesn't make any sense. If you knew how to make more money than me, I might listen. But you don't. So I love you. You're not a bad guy. You should do secret. <laughs> right? <laughs> so <laughs> he's going to get started. <laughs> okay? But... Consciously competent, right? So you got to find somebody that knows stick, right? 
So you become consciously competent. But this is when you got to put all your effort, your concentration, and your focus into it. It takes a lot of your time, like learning to tie your shoes. You remember when you're first learning how to drive a stick? Like you had to like get into second to third gear, right? Get into second to third gear. You really had to focus on that, right? When you were first learning to drive a car, you had to like, fo- like you know, left linker up. To, like. And then once you did it over and over and over, when was the last time you thought about how to get in reverse? When was the last time you thought about how to go from second to third? When was the last time you thought about left blinker is up? Like, you just do that automatically, right? You're what they call unconsciously competent. And that's what you want to get in everything. So first thing you got to do is this. You got to realize that there are things that you don't know that you don't know. A lot of them trip you up in life. People say ignorance is bliss. If ignorance is bliss, then why aren't more people happy? Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is poverty. Ignorance is racism. Ignorance is intolerance. Okay? Unconsciously incompetent. You become consciously competent. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, consciously incompetent. Now you know you don't know, so you've got to find somebody that knows it. Now here's the deal. You, don't have to, you can't find somebody that's consciously competent. You've got to find somebody that's what? Unconsciously. unconsciously competent, meaning they can do it in their sleep. Do you think Joe Valenzuela actually thinks about, how do I build this thing again? No. Oh. Do you think when he goes into a wow party, he's like, now what do I say? No. But when you do your first one, do you have to focus everything on it? But how do you get good at it? You do it over and over and over and over and over and over. I see most people that read one book and they never read it again. One of my mentors said, I would rather you learn and study 10 books than read 100 books and master those 10, then read 100. Okay? Because knowing and application are different. We already talked about that. Okay? Now, a couple of things here, just talking about it. Obviously, you got a lot of the greats out there. Okay? Robert Kiyosaki's the... Oh, sorry. Okay? John's... Oh, oh, oh. I don't... I don't... I don't... I don't I'm going to just let that go. All right, okay? Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, a lot of these people, you know? And when you get a chance to spend time with them, and, and get around them, get around the books. And Joe said this, spend more on your education than your transportation, okay? And you can, go, you can do amazing things. I believe the most important thing to invest in is people. And I was trying to explain this to the guy from Edward Jones because here's the thing. I would rather invest my money in people than I would in any business. And the reason why is because I believe that relationships are the, are the current currency of today's economy, okay? And working with people. Now, here's the thing. Some people are not ready to grow. They still want to play games with their life. And that's fine. They can, they can consciously choose. The thing that I will tell you for sure is that it takes about three to five years. Let's just say five. It takes a minimum of five years to become wildly successful of diligent, consistent effort, growth, and work. Five years. It takes five years. But if you don't choose to grow, it takes the rest of your life to be a failure. Meaning you have to live with yourself for the remainder of your life, not overcoming the things in your life that could give you an incredible quality of life. You have to choose. You're consciously choosing, because now you know. Some of you guys prior to this night didn't even know that some of this stuff was available. And with Americans, it's one of the horrible things that they say, if you want to hide anything from an American, just put it in a book, because they won't read it. So, huh? But get around these people. And the associations of the people that I started to surround myself changed changed who who I was and where I was in my life. And I learned the process of goal setting, which I'm not gonna go over tonight. Joe did an amazing job on Saturday. We got that training recorded, we're gonna put it up, okay? So amazing process of goal setting and learning how to actually set a goal and be a goal achiever, not just a goal setter or a wish setter, as some people say, okay? And learning those processes. But the thing that I want you to think about is that in three to five years, three to five years are gonna pass no matter what, true? The question is who are you gonna be in three to five years? And I hope that you make a conscious decision to grow, to grow, to grow, you know. And Jim Rohn really set it up best. He said, the winds of life blow the same on all of us. What determines our destination is not the winds of life. It's the set of our sail. sail. And that's what this event is about. It's about setting a better sail this week than last week, this month than last month, this year than last year. And you can't change destination overnight, but you can change direction. And guess what? Some of you guys, one of the biggest challenges that you're going to experience is overcoming yourself. It really is. And I talked a lot of this on Saturday, so I know this is a repeat for some of you guys. But 
overcoming who you are. Now, it doesn't stop here. I hope today is a decision that you make to say, you know what, I'm going to choose growth. Because you're either choosing growth or you're choosing decline. That's it. That's all you get. And today, you can no longer say, I didn't know. I didn't know. So if a year from now, if you're worse off, it's your fault. Stop blaming. If you're over 18 and you're in the United States of America, you can't blame anybody but you for the way your life turned out. Okay? Now, up until this point, you could say, well, I just didn't know. I didn't know I didn't know. <coughs> but now, take this. Because any time that you dish out blame, you give away all your power. You have no power. Because when you don't take responsibility for anything, you have no room to grow and learn. So, questions you can learn. What's going on here? Books to read. Amazing books to read. First book I would recommend starting with, if you haven't read it already, Darren Hardy, The Compound Effect. Because that's the book that makes all these other ones work. Great books. Relationships, Five Love Languages. Or Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Great book too. But I'd start with Five Love Languages. I think it's an easier read. Okay. Leadership books. Anything John C. Maxwell. All right. People skills, Dale Carnegie. Money skills, Napoleon Hill. Great authors out there. Read them. Get to their classes. Get to their seminars. Go. Invest in yourself because you're worth it. But here's the amazing thing. The ripple effect that's created when you invest in yourself and the impact you get to make on those behind you is outrageous. Don't do it for you. Do it for your spouse. Do it for your kids or your future kids. Because you got to remember, you will be the greatest influencer in your children's life, if you're in their life. You will be. And how they wind up and end up. And guess what? Some of you guys have, because I know there's a lot of you that have children, and some of you guys might be thinking, man, there are areas in my life that I might have, maybe I could have done a little bit better. Great. Clean it up now. I didn't clean up with my dad with things that, were bought, that I didn't clean up with him until I was 23 years old. But here's the thing, I would rather have cleaned up with him and have an amazing relationship for the rest of my life than have him sitting on his deathbed wishing I would have created that relationship. Okay? You got one life, this is it. What do you want your tombstone to read? <coughs> do you want people to have to get up and lie at your eulogy? Oh, he was a great man. She did great things. And they don't really mean him. I don't know about you, I didn't want my tombstone to read. Jesse McPherson, he tried real hard. <laughs> It's funny, but that'd be sad, right? <laughs> Jesse McPherson left a bunch of debt for his family. That's my biggest fear in life. My biggest fear in life is not a financial freedom. It's not leaving a legacy. What did I waste my whole life doing that I couldn't leave anything behind for the next generation? And it's not necessarily money. I'm talking about education, wealth, all these things. You know? So here's the thing. Tonight was a little heavy, yes? All right, okay. Some of you guys are like... I was, no, I just, I just want to make 200 bucks. You know, like, what? <laughs> what? No, I don't, I don't really want to change my life. Calm down, people. You know, all right. This is not what I was looking for. I apologize. <laughs>